Early on Monday morning this past week, I was on a bike ride listening to a podcast about the Psalms. Seriously. But after a while, I thought, no, I need some music. And Celine Dion popped up and the song Ashes started playing. There's a line in that song that's repeated several times. Can beauty come out of ashes? Can beauty come out of ashes? Today, we're continuing our sermon series, Hyde Park at the Movies, looking at the movie Come From Away. It's a musical, really, turned into a movie. It's about 9-11 and the days following. There were a lot of ashes on September 11th, 2001. There was a lot of heartache and fear. And in the midst of it all, a few very beautiful things were discovered as well. Yes, beauty came out of ashes, especially for those folks whose stories are portrayed in this particular movie. Come From Away tells the true story of what was happening on that terrible day more than a thousand miles north of New York in Gander, Newfoundland, when 7,000 people, people from planes that were forced to make emergency landings, arrived in Gander. If you were of age that day, it's likely you remember exactly where you were that morning, who you were with, what you did, and how you felt as you watched those images on your television. We were all scared and fearful. Our family was living in Miami at the time, and the church where I served on staff had a spontaneous prayer service with its neighboring Jewish synagogue that night. I remember we read Psalm 46. It brought comfort and assurance when we read the words because indeed the earth changed and the mountains shook that day. It was as if that Psalm was written for us at that particular time. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. It was, it is a strong reminder that in chaotic and anxious times, our refuge and our strength are found in God. God has proved this time and time again. God is faithful. And in the faithfulness of God, we find refuge. Yes, we are given shelter from the storm swirling all around us. And in the shelter of God, we can rest. We can be still. That day, that day we were all so uncertain about the future and we desperately wanted to connect with others. And somehow the events of the day helped us become a little more united in our care for our neighbors. I mean, we reached out to those in need and even though we were shaken, I don't know, it seemed to unite us as a nation in some ways. We felt, I don't know, we felt a solidarity with one another. But that feeling, that feeling of being a member of the United States, that feeling didn't last long. It was far too brief. In fact, that was probably the last time we experienced any kind of real unity as a nation. Maybe it was because we felt we had a common enemy. I don't know, but today, today, 20 plus years later, it seems that we are more divided than ever. Islamophobia, refugees on so many borders, COVID-19, racism, the recent decisions of our Supreme Court, all of it, all of it has divided us even further. And so perhaps now, now on this 4th of July weekend, now more than ever, we should reflect on a movie like this one. Because my friends, we, you and I, need to be reminded of the generosity of spirit and the capacity for connection that we humans can summon. We can summon in a time of crisis, and we can do it in our daily living as well. Ben Brantley of the New York Times said, Come from away is a cathartic reminder of the capacity for human kindness in even the darkest of times and the triumph of humanity over hate. So let's turn to the movie. 
To help set the scene, let me remind you that after the terrorist attacks in New York City, the Pentagon, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania, all U.S. airspace was quickly shut down, and flights from all over the world that were en route heading toward the United States, well, suddenly they had no place to go. But in Gander, Newfoundland, there was this huge, mostly unused airport. You see, at one time, before planes could actually cross the Atlantic without refueling, they would stop in Newfoundland. But now, now that jets don't need to refuel, the huge airport, well, it has only six flights a day. So 38 commercial planes already in the air were diverted to Gander, a town of about 9,000 people. The passengers on the plane knew very little of what was going on. Some of the pilots told them really what had happened. Others did not. Now this was before cell phones that everyone had and those who, the few folks who did have them were having problems getting through with their calls. I mean, they knew that American airspace had been closed. They knew there had been a terrorist attack and they knew they were not being allowed off of those planes. The rest, I don't know, the rest was just disjointed hearsay. Some of those planes had been in the air for 12, even 18 hours as they traveled around the globe. And once they landed, they couldn't get off the plane. Understandably so, the officials didn't know the extent of the attack or who was behind it. And therefore, every single plane was suspect. All afternoon they sat on the tarmac, all evening they sat, scared and with no way to even call their loved ones to tell them that they were safe. Some of them were not even able to speak English. So finally after dark, the passengers were released and buses began to take the passengers, whom the locals referred to as the plane people, and buses took the plane people to shelters. And quickly they filled schools and churches. They filled up the Lions Club and the Elks Club in Gander and in nearby towns. The plain people were fearful and fatigued. You could see it in their eyes and on their faces, traveling now in darkness to only God knew where. I can't describe it as well as the musical did, but in a short amount of time, the citizens of Gander mobilized to provide food and shelter, refuge and welcome to 7,000 shaken, scared, weary travelers. The town's population doubled in one day. To add to all of this, there was a huge cultural and religious difference between a lot of the people. I mean, they came from 92 different countries. In one particularly moving scene, the extreme cultural unfamiliarity really hits home. There was this one plane full of African people. They were escorted onto their school bus after waiting 28 hours because of security proceedings. And when they finally arrive at the church where they're going to be housed, Salvation Army volunteers stand waiting ready to welcome them. And the volunteers were dressed in their Salvation Army uniforms. However, the African people did not speak English, and so they mistake the Salvation Army for uniformed soldiers. They see foreign security guards with guns, and naturally, they assume the worst, like they're being taken to some sort of prison camp. They're terrified, and they refuse to get off the bus. Finally, the Canadian bus driver notices that one of the women is clutching a Bible. He can't read their language, but he figures that the verse system would be about the same as the English Bible that he's read many times. So he gently takes the Bible from her and he turns to Philippians 4, 6. Clearly a verse that was meaningful to him as he had memorized it. He gives them back the Bible and pointing, he says, Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. And that's how they started speaking the same language. Yes, this vignette, it marks a beautiful turning point where they start communicating across language and cultural barriers through their shared sacred text. One reviewer said, this development humanizes a group of foreigners, transforming the viewer's perspective to stop seeing them as a foreign other 
and begin to connect with them as a fellow human, a spiritual being with shared faith. The story goes even further, showing people of different faiths, Jewish, Hindu, Muslim, Christian, connecting deeply in the library or in a church, places that were set apart as places of prayer. Refuge, sacred refuge provided in moments of deep understanding and human connection. Now we also learn that one of the planes has some terminally ill kids on it from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They were on their way to Disney World in Orlando. In Gander, they were housed at an old church camp, taken on canoe rides and hay rides. They even saw a wild bear. Not shown in the movie, but in my research, I learned that on the last day, two of the sick girls were celebrating birthdays. So the town organized a birthday party for all 350 people on board that flight to Orlando. They had cake and gifts, balloons, and even a visit from Commander Gander. Later, one of the girl's fathers said he wanted the constable to know that it's okay. It would be okay, he said, if his daughter never made it to Disney World because she had the time of her short life in Gander. Refuge, sacred space, sanctuary, safe haven, protection, all of it, all of it offered to strangers who became friends. The stories go on and on. In those difficult days, people fell in love and others broke up. Some learn of the deaths of loved ones, and there are examples of hostility and suspicion, particularly toward Middle Easterners and Muslims. But through it all, they and we realize that the world will never be the same again. So what can you and I learn or be reminded from the stories in this movie? <laughs> oh my goodness, we are so beautifully reminded that people can come together to offer refuge, compassion, and grace, even in the most challenging and unexpected situations. And even then, humor, hope, and faith can be shared in very meaningful ways. Humor. Like when one Newfoundlander reaches out to offer aid and says, thank you for coming to Walmart. Would you like to come to my house for a shower? And hope, like Beulah telling her new friend Hannah bad jokes to distract her while waiting by the phone. Or going with her to church to pray for her son, a Manhattan firefighter, hoping with her for news that her son is okay and faith, faith, wow, the depth of refuge and strength felt when you saw people of all different faith traditions praying together, praying in different ways, but united in their faith and the comfort and peace that it brought to them and to others was powerful. Humor, hope, and faith are all so well articulated. Another thing we're reminded of is that separation and dehumanization from fear is it's wrong and it's dangerous. Remember Bonnie, the manager of the animal shelter in Gander, a member of the SPCA? Well, she knew there were animals on board some of those planes, but could not get to them because of a real fear of what might have been in the cargo holds on the planes. But Bonnie made a way to find and provide refuge for 19 dogs, cats, and two rare bonobo chimpanzees. And then there's the Egyptian-born Ali. Ali is met with prejudice from some of the passengers when he's trying to talk on the phone. And even though he's a world-class chef, he isn't allowed into the kitchen initially because the locals didn't know him. And then when leaving Gander, he is forced to undergo a humiliating body search because of the association people made between Muslims and terrorists, and frankly, still do. Unfortunately, many Americans felt a heightened sense of solidarity on 9-11, which was great, but many Middle Eastern citizens felt growing bigotry and isolation. But once people got to know each other, they felt less isolation and deep friendships were born. I wish that would happen for us because those friendships have lasted now for over 20 years. 
the plain people and the islanders, they still keep in touch to this day. Money, gifts of gratitude were sent back to Newfoundland. Scholarship funds were started and reunions continue to take place. So I ask you, can beauty come out of ashes? Can God's refuge and strength come to us from strangers? Can generosity and connection be summoned even in the most challenging situations? I say a wholehearted yes to all three, and I hope this story will encourage all of us to open our hearts and live with a bit more compassion and acceptance as we seek to make God's love real in this place. Will you pray with me? Oh God, through these stories, we have witnessed people offering touches of love and care as they shared sandwiches and silly jokes, barbecues and beer bashes, grace and a place of refuge to shaken and scared folks. We thank you for these examples of grace and ask that you would give us courage and strength to meet others with the same kindness and compassion as we continue along the path of faith. Amen. <laughs>